Today I want to make two videos. They're going to be about Chirac Inns since that's been in the news since, I don't know, 2009, 2010. And I want to make a video about the over, over sexualization of children. So this is my Chirac Inn video. There's certain points I want to touch on this video that people seem to miss or even omit just to keep the narrative the way they want to. So these young kids who are teenage of age, um, early 20s, which some people call Chiracians, these kids who are basically running amok, running wild, killing, doing whatever they want to, and they have no sense of remorse or any sense of empathy. Usually these kids are inner city kids, black kids, Hispanic kids, um, just kids who honestly are devalued, kids that no one really cares for. Chicago has an, an employment issue. It's really high. It's the highest in the nation. And it trickles down. If your parents can't find work and you're a teenager and you're in the inner city, you're already poor. If your parents can't pay for the things you want, they're going to tell you, okay, you need to get what you want, so get a job. So if your parents can't get a job and you can't get a job and the whole neighborhood is impoverished, that sets a climate for a crime. We all know that when there's high poverty, there's high crime. Not because people who are poor are just initially <clears throat> thieves and, and criminals. It's more so an opportunity. Poverty breeds opportunity for crime because you have to survive whether you have it or you don't have it. Whether you can afford it and you, or you can't afford it, you still have to pay for it. You still have to pay rent. You still have to pay your bills. So you have to do the best that you can do. And unfortunately, a lot of times people seek to do it in an illegal manner. With drugs, there's a big epidemic with heroin, especially in um, white communities, but also within black communities too. Heroin is a very addictive drug and it really, literally just rots your body from the inside out. And with kids seeing their parents who are addicted to drugs, their parents can't parent them the best way that they can. These kids are basically parenting the parents. Some kids are actually paying the bills and paying the rent because their parents can't. Their parents are drug addicts. They are young kids raising these adults who never became adults themselves, who are stuck being children. And that's another aspect of what's going on in Chicago, what's going on in the black community that's not being said. A lot of these parents are not fit to be parents. There was no reason why they had kids other than the fact that there were no contraceptives used and now these kids are here and these kids have no way, have no path and they're supposed to guide themselves through this journey called life and a lot of adults don't really know what they're doing. So now you have a kid who hasn't developedly formed right or wrong or maturity but now they are speed up the process of becoming mature not because they are actually fit for maturity it's because their parents aren't and in poor neighborhoods if the neighborhoods are poor the schools are poor schools get money from taxes and if the community is poor then it's automatically assumed the school is going to be poor now these poor schools who have teachers who are working and they're probably not getting paid enough so they either are going to be okay teachers or just teachers who don't really give a damn and they're just here to collect the check. Now, we all know, especially in the black community, the saying school to prison pipeline and we know this, yet we still keep on sending our kids to these schools where these teachers who are mostly Caucasian women who do not relate to the kids, they do not care for the kids and they don't come from the same neighborhood, the same background, the same culture. So it's already a hesitant feeling teaching these kids and when these kids have issues coming from home to school, whether it's I didn't eat or whether I seen <clears throat> my mother overdose or whatever the case may be, they're coming to school and these teachers who don't care or don't know basically dismiss them and when they want to dismiss them they can push them off to special ed. Special ed is no new hustle. Dr. Umar Johnson talks about this heavily in his lectures about how it's easy to get a black kid into special education not because the child actually needs it not because the child actually has some type of learning disability it's just that the school gets more funding for each child in special ed and if their kids are coming from bad homes it's not unusual to hear of neglect and abuse um, in my senior year of college my last semester I actually volunteered for a nonprofit and I was working at an all boys residential and being the nosy person I am and because of my major psychology, 
I wanted to know the background story. I've always been interested in why people do the things they do, what is in their mentality. And when I read these boys' files, it was so tragic. A lot of these boys were failed from the beginning, whether their parents were involved in their life, whether they had one parent, whether it's the grandma taking care of them, whether it's that their parents' parents have been in the system, so it's generational. A lot of these boys had abuse, sexual abuse in their experience growing up, and I'm just like, this is so traumatic, and the black community does not want to talk about it. The black community does not want to talk about sexual abuse, and I'm like, if most molesters have been molested, and you don't talk about this, then you're perpetuating this system of being violated. Now it's initiation because it seems to be the norm because no one wants to talk about it. No one wants to break that cycle. And it was tragic because I know this information. They didn't know I knew, but I knew. And it made me sympathize and empathize with them. So when I knew they were acting up or when I knew that they either didn't want to go on home visits or they felt some type of way about home visits, I understood. And me being an intern, I was supportive of them because I could relate. Me being a survivor and also me being a young black youth, I could relate. I could relate to wanting certain things, but you can't have it, so you gotta go without. I could relate to not having a perfect family and looking elsewhere, I could relate to that. So these issues are not being talked about. A lot of these women have children by dudes that they knew the dudes were not worth a jack from the giddy up and they have kids with the dude. Dude goes off to prison, runs off, whatever, and she's bitter about it. So she just picks up any dude. And that's usually the dude who abuses the kids. Dr. Boyce Watson did a video about children and abuse and he said children who live in a household with their mother and their boyfriend, the mother's boyfriend, they are 20% more likely to be abused. Kids in the foster care system are 10% more likely to be abused. And kids from two-parent households don't have a higher risk compared to foster kids and compared to kids who live with the mom and the mom's boyfriend. And this is so true. I know a lot of kids who have step-parents or mom's boyfriend and they don't feel comfortable with them. They may not say outright what happened, well, later on, they tell you, you know, he did X, Y, and Z to me. And I'm like, this is why you need to make sure who you procreate with is a person who is father figure, a person who is husband material. You don't just sleep with somebody, get pregnant, and just be like, oops, I guess. You're not animals. You need to think these things out. Because if that child does not have a good relationship with their father, and you don't like the father, that is a burden on that child's shoulder. And I don't think a lot of mothers think about it. Like, it's okay to have con casual conversations about how the father isn't Jack. And that hurts that child's self-esteem because that child understands that that father is a part of them. So if you hate the father, then you must hate them. And I see a lot of black parents teach their children like crap talking about, get your little ass over here and I can't stand you. Your daddy ain't shit. You're going to be just like your daddy. And I'm like, this is not what you say to your kids. It is like these women basically regret having these kids and either the abortion clinic wasn't there they didn't think about it or because their religion or their family they didn't abort the child but if they could it seemed like they would have and this is the dilemma within these children these children come from these messed up household whether they were abused whether they were neglected whether it was poverty whether whatever it was and now no one in the community steps in to guide these children to mentor these children there's no uncle phil that you can come to and now these kids are showing you what years of an abuse neglect disrespect turns into now the chickens are coming home to roost and everybody wants to act crazy like they have no idea why these kids are like this i'm like you do know how these kids are like this everybody dropped the ball everybody deserves a special golden plaque that says l Parents failed them, school failed them, the neighborhood failed them, everyone failed them. And now these kids are grown now and now they're running havoc in the community. When you could have taught him at eight to come correct and you could be that child support system, you said not my problem, not my job. Now the boy's 18 and running amok and you're worried that he's going to try to run through your daughter. But you didn't take the opportunity to raise and guide that child. Yes, that's not your issue, that's not your problem, that's not your child. But if you are a community and black people love to say you know villages raise children everybody should have stepped in and said okay parent can't do it mom can't do it dad can't do it but i will do it but no one did that 
and now these kids are, are basically insane these kids are running amok and they don't give a damn whereas when I was growing up we had shows that taught us valuable lessons we had family matters we had um, full house we had Fresh Prince of Bel Air. These kids don't have the same thing. These kids are raised off of ratchet television. These kids don't have anything to look outside to as a role model. Like when I was growing up, we had role models. We had people who were decent. Then around the teenage age, ratchetness came to its height. But we had those shows that we could reflect. Even if our household wasn't together, we could always look and be like, you know, well, what would Uncle Phil do? Or what would Carl Winslow do? Now, it's what would basketball wise do or what would these other shows do the times have changed but the situation the issues have not changed this is perfect cosmic karma what you don't deal with now you will have to deal with later and me I could go in on these kids and talk about how they need to do X Y and Z but what I have to look at is where was the parents where are the parents who raised these kids and what condition were these kids raised in because if they had mentors, if they had suitable parents, most likely than not, they wouldn't be running the streets. Most likely than not, they wouldn't be killing each other. How can they look at another person and value their lives if they knew when they were growing up and they know now no one gives a damn about them? How could they give a damn about anybody else? They can't see respect in themselves, but they're going to respect someone else. I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm not saying it's all right. But I will say is I understand. So what is the community going to do about it? Because it's just going to get worse. Are you going to intervene? Are you going to guide these kids? Are you going to get counseling for them? What are you going to do? And it seems like for these kids, they're not going to get until they have kids. And they start giving a damn about their kids. I see a couple gang, either gang members or gang members who used to be in the gang have kids and their kids get shot. And then that's when it hits them. Now that it's their kids that's gone, now they feel some type of way about it. But I'm like, this is perfect cosmic karma it was no problem for you to do it to someone else's kid now it happened to your kid it's a problem and the cycle will go on and on and on until people realize it's all bull and people realize that because you're hurt that does not give you a right to hurt others because you're hurt does not mean that you have an excuse to hurt others if you are hurt, you seek healing. You do not seek to he hurt other people. That's the evilness in it all. If you know what it's like to be hurt, to be traumatized, to be hated, and then you do it to someone else, that's evil. Because you knew it firsthand experience, so you should do better. And if you choose not to do better, that's the evilness in it all. And a lot of people don't talk about that. A lot of people make excuses for how they were raised. I understand. I understand a lot of it. But that doesn't mean that I go and do people wrong. I, everybody has been done wrong. I have been wrong. I have been done wrong. But I don't go around hurting people and doing malicious things because, well, someone else did it to me. Someone else did it to you, so you have firsthand experience what not to do to someone else. But um, time will tell. I mean, I think Chicago can change and become a black mecca if it chooses to. You have the uh, Nation of Islam located in Chicago, right? Their, their headquarters in, in Chicago. So I think it will take a lot of organization, understanding, empathy, breakdowns, and, and buildups to change the community. There needs to be employment. There needs to be job creation. There needs to be education. There needs to be even abstinence and use of safe sex. Because you can't keep having kids in poverty, knowing that they're impoverished, knowing that you're impoverished and you have nothing for them. You're just going to keep on pushing poverty. That's evil. If you have nothing better for these kids, why are you having these kids? What, so because the misery loves company and you need someone to, to handle you or stick it out with you because the dude you were sleeping with wasn't going to stick it out with you? I don't understand this. We cannot keep on perpetuating these cycles because these kids suffer. Like I said in one of my other videos, you know, back then, people were catching nooses, now we're catching bullets. It's more efficient now. And just like back then, they weren't being prosecuted. And today, they're not being prosecuted. Maybe a handful, but not every single one. So we need to do better. So the next generation can be better. We need to be martyrs. We need to take our ego and take our selfishness aside for the next generation. Because we cannot continue this. And I can't knock these kids. I'm not giving them an excuse, but I can't knock these kids because I understand. You treat people how you were treated. 
and these kids weren't treating well. And I'm not saying this is for every kid. Some of these kids could have came from really good backgrounds and they still chose fuckery. It's very well possible, but the likelihood of that is slim. So, to conclude this video, I think Chicago has great amount of potential to change, but it's going to take every single one, every single person to commit to changing and to not just say they're going to do it, but to actually do it. So that's the end of my video. Tell me what do you think? Have you ever run across a Chiracian? Um, how do you feel about the word? Have you even seen the Spike Lee movie Chirac? What did you think about it? So leave your comments below. Comment, rate, subscribe, and share. That's my video. Be blessed and I'm out.